No crime makes you more angry than one committed against a child. Even more disturbing, preying on vulnerable children seems to be growing more prevalent. For pedophiles, social media has made grooming victims chillingly easy. Their false identities and shifting online profiles mean police face an almost impossible task to catch them. But now vigilantes are using the pedophiles' own predatory techniques against them. And leading the chase are people like Stinson Hunter, the pedophile hunter. What's your guy saying, Jay? Uh, he's asking me if it's a police trap. Really? Yeah. He ain't, I don't think he'll show, man. A nondescript hotel room in the north of England. And Stinson Hunter is closing in on another predator. What are some of the things that he said to this girl? If I asked you to kiss me, would you? I want to fuck your brains out. I want, uh, would you let me take your virginity? It's now quite late at night, and we're just going to wait and see if this guy, I think his name's Stuart, he's 46, um, see if he's actually going to turn up to the hotel to try to explain himself to Stinson and why he was saying such revolting things to a 13-year-old girl. We'll see. My name's Stinson Hunter. Do you know why you're here today? Why do you do it? What's the point? I, I can guarantee that you've done this as well. You've sat there and said, this is a problem, right? Next minute you forgot about it and done nothing about it. That's kind of what I did. But I was like, there's a problem. I'm not going to sit around and let someone else deal with the problem. This is Stinson in action. The self-described pedophile hunter confronts men who think they're meeting children for sex. Scott, I made a mistake. You're married, right. ma'am, sir. Yes, please. I made a mistake. All right. You certainly have, sir. No His team films the encounters and posts them online for the world to see. This footage is also uploaded to Facebook. If you follow I me, don't want that, please. you haven't got a choice. You know, these are people that were going to rape kids. It's not entertainment. I don't put my stuff out for entertainment. Stinson's methods are unconventional and controversial and have made this 33-year-old a cult-like figure in the UK. I'm not no hero, I'm no Batman, I'm, I'm me and I'm intelligent enough and smart enough. That's the same thing, all oh, the irony, all oh, the fucking <laughs> irony. Um, Here you are, a former junkie, you're covered in tats. What's wrong piercings. with the tats? Don't say that, <laughs> you'll get lynched in the UK You've for saying that. You've been in jail. Have I? That's a lie. You are an unlikely hero. An accidental hero. So you were told straight away in the first message that this person you were talking to was an 11-year-old girl. No. Right, yes, she was. While it's the stings that attract the headlines, behind the scenes is where most of the work is done. Sad face. I'm really annoyed, to be honest. Are you free tomorrow? You're answering him, but you're being quite blunt. Yeah. Stinson and his offsider, James Donovan, work around the clock luring men in using fictitious online profiles on social networking sites. The moment someone makes contact, Stinson makes it very clear that they're talking to an 11, 12 or 13-year-old child. What are some of the messages he's going to hear? But that often doesn't stop them explicitly asking to meet for sex. It's just revolting, isn't it? It is, yeah. That's why I really want to get this guy. Today, Stinson's targeting Blackpool in northwest England. In just one day here, Stinson Hunter has seven men chatting to what they believe is a 13-year-old girl. One is a 50-year-old computer technician. Another is a travelling businessman who is staying in the same hotel as us. And word has just come through that one of Hunter's potential targets has asked to meet the girl here at Pleasure Beach. How are you feeling about this one? Yeah, I've got like, the nerves and stuff because I'm not used to doing outside. What are you going to ask him? I just want to know why he's doing it. And then I'm going to put it on the internet. Please, sir. 
My name's not Mark. So you're not here to meet a 13-year-old girl, mate? No. Can you just take down your, face, your mask a second, please? Mark is a 27-year-old who lives at home with his mum just outside of Blackpool. Well, uh, it says here that that's you, there. What on earth? Mark gets the shock of his life when it is Stinson who turns up and not 13-year-old Stacy. And also, are you, gonna, are you gonna tell me that you've never spoken inappropriately to underage girls before? My best mate is in prison for doing such a thing. I would never! You're gonna be in the same position, mate. I've the messages that Mark has sent are particularly hard to read. Stinson uploads these conversations and the video to his Facebook page, encouraging his half a million followers to share it. What's the point of putting this online? To raise awareness. To, to, you, you, can, you can sit there, right, you mm. can sit there and make a little show without me in it and say, oh, parents, look, this is happening online. It doesn't get through to people. Mm. This, this method wakes people up. As I've said, your information is handed into the police. And then he's off. Do you ever feel sorry for them? No. What? No. No. Why should I feel sorry for them? This person has gone out and he's tried to sexually abuse a child. These people make every single choice themselves. You know, I've not been an angel in my mm. life, but I've made every single choice myself, mm. and these people have made their mm. choices. Mm. Stinson knows all about bad choices. He was addicted to hard drugs at 12, which saw him end up in a children's home where sex abuse was commonplace. You know, I stole from my family. You know, I stole cars. I've robbed houses. I've, you know, I've, you know, I've beaten people up for no reason. I've, you know, even when I was in prison, I was attacking people. What were you sent to prison for? Arson. Um, I set fire to um, an empty school. It was late at night and I was 17. You know, what do you think would have happened if you weren't sent I'd to I'd have killed prison. somebody. If I'd, I would have killed somebody. I, was, I would have, I know, I would have killed people. That was the path That you was were the on. plan, that was my plan. That's what I was going to do. I was going to hurt people. So what changed? How did you go from being this person who wanted to self-destruct and destroy everything around you to being a man on this mission? Prison therapy, nearly dying, my son, you know. Four things. Yeah, pretty much. I don't know, man, like, I just, I don't want to be that person anymore. And I've still got it in me to be that person. Every day is a constant battle to not be that person. And today, the battle is focused on this man. Stuart is single, works for a trucking company, and has been sending disgusting messages to Stacy, who he believes is a 13-year-old girl. How badly do you want to get this really going? Really bad. I'll go up to his work if I have to and have him, do you know what I mean? Like, I'm going to have him because the public need to see that this is another person that's doing this. He has his critics, but it's hard to argue with the results. Stinson's confrontations have led to 18 convictions in less than two years. 29-year-old Steve Stapleton was one of them. He is now in jail. Oh, God, yeah, I've, just, I've got a guy locked up for years. You are going to be locked up for this. You are going to be arrested. I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. I handed the information to the police. Then I put the video on, the video went bang, it was online. And it went mental. But as a result of the Stapleton thing, a 13-year-old girl came forward to the police and told them that he'd been raping her. So because of your video, yeah. another victim came forward and yeah. pinpointed this guy as... Many have done it. Many have as done it. As a rapist? It. Yeah, many have done it. So how did you feel when Stapleton got eight years jail. I started crying and I was like, I've done it. I said, I've got him. I said, that's just, that's the one that I wanted. I wanted him so bad. Coming up. Why don't you bring me down, sir? Whoa, 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 whoa. 
when it all goes wrong. I got run over. You nearly died. Yeah. And face to face. I'm just gonna wait and see if he's actually going to turn up to the hotel to try to explain himself with a predator. I felt sorry for a 13-year-old having to go on adult dating sites. Listen, if you had concerned, you wouldn't have said that you'd love to make love to her. That's next on 60 Minutes. Stinson Hunter is out to get pedophiles. A one-man crusader determined to catch child abusers, then name and shame them online. While his campaign has won popular support, his unorthodox methods are not winning points with police. In fact, they're determined to stop him. People didn't have a fucking clue what was going on. You know, people had no idea that their 13-year-old daughter or son could be in their bedroom or even sat right next to them with their iPad or whatever they use, and they could be talking to a man or a woman that is trying to abuse that child. Stinson Hunter is a man on a mission. Right now, he is chatting to six men online. One of them is Stuart, a 46-year-old who believes he's talking to a 13-year-old girl called Stacy. But Stuart seems to be getting suspicious. This is where we'll know now. I, 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 I can't call it. I really can't call it. Stinson is worried that another predator that the police have missed might get away with it. The police, they're embarrassed by what I do. They're embarrassed that a former junkie criminal is going out and doing all this stuff and getting more convictions, three times more convictions than them in a quarter of the time. Has Stinson Hunter embarrassed the police? He probably has to a degree. He pulls the the veneer back and, and, and proves the fact that, you know, anyone can do it. You don't need to be a rocket scientist. This is shooting fish in a barrel. Jim Gamble is the former head of the UK's Child Exploitation and Online Protection Centre. He has spent decades in policing. Let me be clear. You know, you're dealing with a crime where there's a stigma like no other. The smell never goes away. So when you bring them in and say, right, I'm going to report you, that person leaves. When they're arrested by police, there's a system that they go through that ensures there's a suicide strategy. And before people start going, well, we don't care, I understand that. But the wives and children of those individuals, those predators or suspect predators at that time, they have lives. You know, they shouldn't be further brutalised because of, of something we suspect, you know, the man in that house of having done. Case in point, Michael Parks. There's going to be no hostilities. No, no, no. This 45-year-old father turned up with chocolates and wine to have sex with a 12-year-old girl. Stinson filmed the encounter, handed the evidence to police, and, as always, posted the video on his website. This isn't yours, sir. That's not you there, no? No. He was on police bail, and he killed himself. Did you feel responsible? No, no, because he made the choices himself. So you don't think the public humiliation of having his photo put online is what pushed him over the edge? I don't know. Nobody can say any different. Can you just wash your hands of it Well, like I have that? done. I have done. Why should I care? I didn't know him. You know, it's easy to blame people. It's easy to sit here and say, Stinson did it. We'll blame Stinson, scapegoat, we can use him. But why don't you blame the actual person that, A, committed a crime, right? B, put a rope round his neck and killed himself. And I, I, will re I will never feel bad for it. I refuse to feel bad for it. I don't care he's dead. I have no, you know, his kid. I feel bad for his kid. At any given time in the UK, over 50,000 people are downloading indecent images of children. But Jim Gamble says that doesn't make it right for Stinson to take the law into his own hands. I think putting uh, images online on Facebook or elsewhere before people have gone through the criminal justice system is just reckless. Um, he is classically a vigilante. He will 
you know, appear well intentioned and might be, but I think he's dangerous and I think he's reckless. Anyone that calls me a vigilante is a moron, you know what I mean? Why do you rail against that title vigilante? Why do you see it as a negative? Because it's not the right word. I'm, I'm not, I, I shouldn't be labelled. I don't feel that I should be labelled a vigilante because I'm not a vigilante. Being but a vigilante is someone who takes the law into their own hands. I'm that's... not taking the law into my own hands. But that's what you're doing, No, it's not. It? I report a crime to the police. Pursuing and punishing someone accused anybody. of a crime? I don't pursue anybody. They pursue me. I hand the information to the police. I don't dish out any form of justice. But you don't think that posting someone's name, their alleged crime and their photo online yeah. is playing judge and jury? No. No. That's, if I was playing judge and jury, I wouldn't hand it in to the police. I wouldn't say, there you go, mate. Get that dealt with. So what happens if someone sees one of your videos and thinks, well, that's a guy who lives down the street from yeah. me. I know him. I'm going to take the law into my own hands. I'm going to deal with it. Are you not responsible for that? No. Now, if somebody takes that, and this hasn't happened, but if somebody takes that and goes and does something to somebody else, that's not my problem. What is Stinson's problem is when the consequences of his campaign come back on him and his family. Wind your window. Wind your window down, sir. Stinson's partner and baby boy have been threatened. While he's been attacked with a tire iron. Whoa, 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 whoa. And even run over by a man he was filming. Four. My health is suffering. I got run over. That was quite shit. You nearly like, died? Yeah. You broke both of your ankles? Yeah, and a big hole in the back of my head. Um, I've got nerve damage in my shoulders. I can't feel my shoulders around there. But it wasn't my choice to get run over, and that made me realise that life is really fucking short, and you've got to grasp every single opportunity while you can. I think we should meet on his terms. You know, if this doesn't work out, I think, it's, I th I think he is going to show. Finally, a breakthrough in their effort to confront Stuart. The 46-year-old now realises he's been sprung, but has agreed to meet Stinson face to face. So this isn't a stitch up job, is it? No, mate, honest to God, mate. Incredibly, he's hoping to persuade Stinson not to name and shame him online. I can't understand why any guy would agree to come and talk to you and expose themselves to this? I... Desperation, mm. eh? Right, see you shortly. Sound, yeah, see in a bit, mate. It's now quite late at night, and we're just going to wait and see if he's actually going to turn up to the hotel to try to explain himself to Stinson and why he was saying such revolting things to a 13-year-old girl. We'll see. Do you want to get the cameras going? All right, mate, my name's Stinton Hunt. I just want to take a seat, mate. Cheers, and we'll have a little chat about this. You know why you're here today. I know why. Because I sent inappropriate messages yeah. to a minor. Right. Honestly. That's your message, isn't it? Yeah, That's yeah, your yeah, message yeah. there. Yeah, it's, it's, so it's easy to confess. It's just so it's just yeah. for, for... Honestly. Yeah. Um, I felt sorry for a 13-year-old having to go on adult dating sites to find a friend. And the... <laughs> this is going to sound really strange, but... The messages I sent her yeah. were supposed to scare her off. I was hoping she'd turn around and say, you're a fucking dirty pervert, don't contact me again. Because... If you were that no, concerned... Hang on, let me finish. If you had, were that concerned about a 13-year-old girl, you wouldn't have said, I would love to fuck your brains out. You wouldn't have said that you'd love to make love to her. You wouldn't have asked her if, you, if she wanted to kiss you. You wouldn't have said those things on different occasions and not within the same time frame. You but, wouldn't have said it. But, uh, this here is I grooming. Know, I know it is. If a guy said that to your 13 year old girl, you'd be thinking the same thing that I'm thinking. I wanted this to come <laughs> off. I had no intention of meeting her. I shouldn't have sent the messages. Yeah. I accept that. I'm, I'm, re I'm really sorry about that. But I'm no groomer, I'm no pervert, paedophile in any way, shape, or form. And I just wanted her without going to anybody else. And, and I know I've done it wrong. And, and stupidity is my only crime here, but I didn't want her to end up with somebody who, who the stuff I sent her would actually do them to her. Right, just so you know, your information is going to be handed into the police, your information is going to be uploaded to the internet, and I will be attending court to prosecute.
Because you have broken the law, mate. But you're not going to go to the police and ruin my life. You've ruined your own life, mate. Actually. So for me, it being stupid, my life's ruined. You've ru yeah, effectively. It's not ruined, you can because sort it, it out. It is. It isn't. I'm no. Sorry. You'd have, you wouldn't have had... Family and friends. It ends with Stuart agreeing to hand himself into police the following morning. Oh my God, that was so uncomfortable to watch. The entire confrontation took an excruciating 41 minutes. Do you believe him? No. Did any of you believe him? Uh, look, I felt really sorry for him. And then I kept thinking of the messages that he sent to that 13 year old girl and reminded myself that he was grooming her, but sitting, watching him sit there and you grill him was really uncomfortable. You'll be feeling shit for a bit. You'll go away and you'll remember and like, you'll go through, I'll send you the slides. You read through the slides and then ask yourself, mm. if that was your 13 year old daughter that that guy was talking to, would you be feeling sorry for him now? Would you be feeling emotional towards him now? You, you wouldn't. Seeing Stinson in full flight, you can't help admire his conviction but understand why police want him to stop. Indeed, laws in the UK will change this year, making stings of this kind illegal. Not that Stinson has any regrets. I wonder what you think your daughters will think of your behaviour, sir? Oh, please, no. No, please, please, no. I don't care if you think I'm a vigilante. Think about me what you want, but you're thinking about me. And while you're thinking about me, you're thinking about what I do. And while you're thinking about what I do, you're thinking what your kids are doing. Do you feel you've started something important? Yeah. I honestly, honestly think, not for my own gratification or anything, but I do think this is gonna change the world. I'm not trying to be a hero. I don't wanna be a hero. I don't wanna be labeled as a hero. You know, I'm just Stinson Hunter that, discovered something, found a way that's perfectly legal, morally questionable, right, ethically questionable, but it worked, and it worked well, because you're sat here talking to me. Hello, I'm Alison Langdon. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.